Hi, welcome to You Can't Do This in the Movies. This is um, a quick rundown of some of my favorite uh, tips and tricks and techniques that are unique to comics and that um, keep me really interested in this wonderful medium. They're some of the things that kept me um, engaged in the medium and that helped me create a graphic memoir that really reached people um, and uh, reached the bestseller list and things like that. Um, what I want to do is help you realize that creating a graphic memoir or graphic novel can be much more than just illustrating your words. So I'm going to show you some quick um, techniques that a lot of um, really, really interesting graphic novelists have used. Uh, I'm going to skip over some slides. Those slides are um, well documented um, much deeper in the course. If you're interested, I'll point out exactly where you can find out more. You can't do this in the movies. So the first thing is polyptics, or sometimes called pans. Scott McCloud sort of coined that term. Oops, look at that. And this is a great example. The character here is moving across a background which doesn't move, even though it's divided into four different panels here. Um, and so you see McCloud moving through time and space in a way that you just can't do in a movie. Um, he's chopped up one, two, three, four panels in space and time, yet we can glimpse the totality of the space and in a kind of a way, a, a totality of the time as well. Um, and you can do this in really static ways like this, or, or, or let's say um, sort of more serene ways, or you can do that, whoops, in more like really exciting ways like this from Master of Kung Fu where the fellow is j leaping off this, um, off of this uh, top of this building. Um, you'll see this again in many, many ways. This is a hundred years old from uh, Windsor McKay. It's a great use of that from Jaime Hernandez. Um, here's a text-only version of it from Seth in which he's trying to create a mood and he's creating a bit of a setting and he is um, he's letting the words do a lot of the talking here but as your eye sort of uh, runs across or sort of pans across this expanse. It helps accentuate the mood he's creating. And here's one from Craig Thompson, two characters in a large party scene, and they're sort of captured in panel one and what might be called panel three down below. But in a weird way, they're, they're in both places at the same time because the, the mass of people is one giant mass at, at the same time as well. Um, a lot of this came from Frank King, who sort of did versions of this um, many times. And you can see the, the characters moving across this beach scene. So another thing that you might want to try or look for is uh, sometimes called the multi-figure uh, panels, or I sometimes call it a game board. It's also from Master of Kung Fu here, where the characters, you'll see there's no panel divisions here, and it's main, mainly the main difference between what we just saw. The character seems to be just everywhere at once in this panel, and it's very exciting. Um, you can see also how the character is moving through the space, which again doesn't change, but this character, as he's hunting um, another character, is uh, moving through space, and you can see his struggle in a way that you wouldn't be able to see if we were focusing panel after panel after panel on him, or if we were staring at a screen and we only watched him. But what we see is he kind of moves through this landscape through this game board. And here's another one. Again, I said I would skip through these a little bit quickly, but this is from Lauren Weinstein, um, whose brilliant goddess of war is moving again through a landscape like a game board. Some of this comes from a, it might be seen as similar to Marcel Duchamp's new descending a staircase. Um, so Here's something else. These are called tangents. I've also heard them called rolling compositions. What you're going to see here are pictures that sort of combine with other pictures to create one. And here's a funny example to get you started. This fellow is not really wearing bull horns. He just happens to be standing in front of a bull. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and so we try to avoid those kinds of things in comics, but other times we can actually make them look really kind of cute. And so in these two panels here on the right, um, uh, by a fellow who calls himself Toddbot. Um, there's this beautiful panel two and panel four are linked together and we feel this sort of joyousness there, but you don't really read them in that order. You, re you read one, two, three, four. Um, here's another version from Peter Cooper 
in which the shoulder of the policeman also becomes the policeman's own arm. And the entirety of both of these drawings, both these drawings of the policeman, help you feel the sort of claustrophobia and fear that this character is experiencing at that moment. The whole thing is, is um, sort of claustrophobic, a giant bowl. Here's a silly version of that in which the the author and character are sort of playing with this, sort of going up and down stairs, trying to show you that like this giraffe exists in two panels at once, and uh, the character is even meeting himself at a certain point. Um, but again, it's things you just can't do in um, in a movie, or or certainly not in prose. It's so delightful and interesting, and lets you um, create so many interesting experiences for a reader. This is a great example, which I'll mention really quickly that this phone is being tossed but in a weird way the phone is being tossed in a way that here it's in the foreground but here it's in the background that car is these people in that car it's just a really delightful sort of flip that that the reader goes with um, and it keeps them engaged. And here's a crazy version of that from Betty and Veronica a long time ago by Dan DiCarlo in which this um, this girl on the beach and this girl on the beach seem like the same girl, but they're not because Veronica is way over here and then she's on the other side of her at this point. And so in a way, your eye is designed to get a little bit confused and flip-flop in the same way that Archie is flip-flopping down here. Those kinds of things are really, really um, exciting if you're going for that kind of dynamic um, uh, sort of f flipping or motion of, the car of your readers and you want to make them um, sort of flip around. I found this in an old um, stack of childhood drawings and um, I just noticed how there's so many weird tangents going on here in the same way. But anyway, more about that in the course. Meta panels and inset panels are another another way. And here we're seeing an inset panel. This single panel sits on these other two. It's the only one boxed in. This is by Will Eisner. These characters, these kids, it's hot, it's the summer. These kids are spilling out of their um, of their houses and they're ready to play. But in this moment that is encapsulated and is like feels like it's taking eternity is when this um, officer is opening up this um, fire hydrant and then finally it's it all spills out and the water and they get to have their fun. But this moment, an inset panel sitting on top of those other panels really um, uh, helps us sort of linger on it. Um, Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson was brilliant at this. These, this character is, or in this moment, is interrupting this moment. And so it's this box within a box. We're studying geography. What state do you live in? As Calvin is um, dreaming he's this like giant dinosaur in the water. These two boxes sit on top of this box too. This box again is his imagination. The boxes that sit on top are the interruptions and it's a great usage of, of, of that technique. You could study nothing but Calvin and Hobbes and be pretty well off. Here's some more usages of that here. These black panels are um, are the panels of Hobbes closing his eyes. Um, and so they're just sort of sitting on top, but they draw a lot of attention to it themselves. And then you get the final understanding in the last panel. It's a sort of delightful version of that. Here's some more versions um, by Craig Thompson. We'll talk about that longer in the course. There's another one by Craig Thompson where this character's sort of affection are, is sort of encapsulated there. It's also sort of the same moment as there. And you sort of see the, the, um, uh, the loved and, um, and lover at the same time. And it's a really nice moment. The last thing I want to show you is diagrams. And um, these can get really involved. Uh, or they can be sort of simple. This is a Lauren Weinstein again from... Um, uh, from Goddess of War, and here she's showing you the Goddess of War's house as a sort of like cutaway, so you can see the kind of person or goddess she is and the kinds of things she does, and so it's an interesting, um, fun way to, to sort of like let you in on a character. The most famous example of this that I can think of is Chris Ware's adoption story from Jimmy Corrigan, um, and briefly, really briefly, you'll see that this character here in the red coat is indicated here in this timeline. The timeline has a couple other points to it here when, um, when she is with a marriage 
in a wedding picture here where she is um, being adopted and there's so many more other moments here she's a um, an egg and a sperm and a fetus um, here are links to her grandparents or her parents rather um, uh, her biological parents which are in the school yearbook which is brought down here we see some drawings of the time of the parents in the school yearbook all of this is done virtually without words and mostly through these kinds of um, diagrams arrows pointers connectors and things like that here's another really extensive version of the same thing um, by Chris Ware and a fun one from Craig Thompson, who does a lot of these things in really fun ways too. This arrow pointing to that, which pokes to, which points to this poking. They're sleep, the two brothers are sleeping in the bed. This arrow points up to there, and it kind of becomes this circle of like just annoyance that these two brothers who share a bed are experiencing. So that's you can't do this in the movies. That's just a small, quick sampling of some of the things that I want to teach you in um, comics for writers in the course that I have um, created specifically for people like you who already write, who know something about characters or maybe plot or maybe even just um, forward momentum of a story, maybe who use words really well. And I want to help you understand that comics and graphic novels is a medium too that needs to be um, learned and, and understood and you can do it and you will have fun doing it because it's such a great medium and there's so many chances for this like delightful interchange between words and pictures. So, Comics for Writers, thanks for joining me on this quick look. If you go over to the URL that's at the Saw Comics website, you'll find out a lot more, and I really want to thank you for being here.